What we're showing you here is the operation of the electric hand with a failure. In starting the vehicle, I can make the shift work fore aft. You're seeing fore aft there. Works beautiful. But whenever I endeavor to do a cross shift, it doesn't want to work properly. In fact, as you'll notice, it will stall a couple of times. The reason it's going to stall is in fact the cross shift cylinder is not working properly. In the worst case scenario, the cross shift cylinder will actually cause a hissing sound. Here, you're not going to hear the hissing sound because the cross shift cylinder failure is minor. There is a very small hole or tear in the cross shift cylinder diaphragm that is causing this problem. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace that diaphragm and therefore fix your electric hand. Here we have the electric hand assembly removed from the terraplane. We take off our little rubber boot here, that doesn't matter, that's just going to fall off anyway. When it's in the vehicle, it's positioned about like that. So I'm letting you look at it that way. This is your main cylinder, this is your fore aft motion. So if you went from second to third or you went from reverse to first, that's accomplished with the large cylinder. This is your cross shift cylinder. The interesting thing about that is it doesn't really look like a cylinder, but you know it is, and it produces this motion or that motion. Either way, what it does is it causes the cross shift to occur. The problem is, as we've demonstrated to you, the diaphragm in here is going to be bad. Now, it's not completely bad. If you had a completely bad diaphragm in this area, you'll hear a hiss when you're trying to operate the cross shift. So if you're trying to shift from the reverse first shift rail to the second, third, or vice versa, there'll be a hiss if this is truly bad, and there'll be no motion. But as I demonstrated to you previously, when it's put in the cross shift position, it doesn't want to go, but I can give it a little pull and it'll finish it. So it is working partway, so there is a small but very significant hole that prevents it from actually working. So we're going to take this apart here, and we're going to show you how to replace it and what the replacement part is and where you're going to get the replacement part. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver and nut driver and maybe even a small wrench and we will disassemble this. Now you'll notice as far as disassembly, for all practical purposes, there is no way you're going to do this in the car. You're going to have to take apart too many things in the car. It's going to be a hairy bear. You don't want to do that. You want to remove it just like I have here because it's the only way you can really get access to these parts. you also notice I'm wearing gloves. That's because no matter what, you can see there's oil on this. Even though the vehicle isn't a major dripper, it is a 1930s vehicle, there will be lubrication that gets out from here and there and on things over time. And this car's got 20,000 miles since I've restored it. And so it's believable that that's going to happen. Now, I've previously replaced this, but it's probably 10 years old now. So it's gone bad again. If you got one from the 30s, I guarantee it's bad. Or if you use it just a teeny bit, it'll break. So you'll have to replace it. Now, the newspaper I have in place here isn't to keep a dirty workbench from getting more dirty. It's actually so I don't scratch up the paint a bunch on the assembly here. What you're going to need to have in order to take this off is a 5 16 nut driver or a 5 16 wrench. You may need both. And you're just going to unscrew the six screws. So I'm going to take the six screws out and then we'll show you what's inside of the unit. Got the first three, now I'll need a 5 16 wrench for the others. 
I'll just got to get it in here and we'll continue removing the other three screws. Now one of the things you're going to notice as you get to like the fourth screw like I just have is it starts to pop apart. The reason for that being is there's a good sized spring in here. And another nice thing about having the newspaper, I have a limited amount of space where things are going to fall because I just had two pieces fall down in here. And I can tip it over and get out. There they are. And put them back in my little pile here. Now we've still got two more to take out. And this gets to be where it's a little more difficult because I don't really want to have to take apart the whole assembly if I don't have to. And I can do this without taking the whole thing apart if I keep the screwdriver in there. I may have to get a longer one. And as I said, when you get down to this point, this thing wants to start to come apart because with the spring inside of it. So your last two are fairly difficult, no matter how you look at it. Get them, and also because there's pressure the whole time you're taking it apart caused by that spring. And I do believe, could be wrong, it's the only place on the internet you're ever going to have seen this done. Because these are rare nowadays, and most people don't know how to fix them. And frankly, honest, most people got them on their cars, disconnect them. And I'm told that's historically what a lot of people did is they decided, oh, that's more trouble than it's worth, and disconnected the unit. Uh, personally, I think that's what makes it interesting is it is so different. So that's why I like to have it working. Now, looking in here, you can see there is a large spring right inside of here. So as I take off the last one, it's still going to keep pushing like that. And it's going to want to spring apart. Now, I haven't had it spring across the room, but it is got some force on it. When you go to putting it back together, these two are going to be your last two you're going to put in, too, because you can't even begin to put them in as the first ones, thanks to the spring. So, I took them out last. I could have taken them out first, but putting them together, they're the last two you want to do. And we're slowly getting it. If it weren't for the spring, we wouldn't have so much pressure on this, and it'd actually be significantly easier to deal with, but without the spring, the system wouldn't work. Almost half. There, it's undone. Now we're going to set that aside for a moment because I want to make sure I get all the parts picked up. So you can kind of see here, the spring is pretty serious. Almost looks like a spring from a bed. For all you know, maybe it is. But it's a pretty serious spring that you got to have in there to make this work. Here's our part that's bad. This is our actual diaphragm mounted in here. And we do know that somewhere here it's leaking. Somewhere it's got a small hole in it. You notice that there is a metal disc that has been stamped and it's rounded over. Faces this way, away from your clevis. It has to face that way. You just cut the thing apart. That's how it goes. So it faces away from the clevis. Remember that when you're going to assemble it. You'll also notice there are three little punches here. What's been done originally by the factory is they punch that so this doesn't want to come off real easy. I've never had a problem with it because I put it back on tight. 
so that's not an issue. But you're going to have to replace the rubber diaphragm here. And we're going to take that apart in a moment and let's show you new rubber diaphragms. Here are the new rubber diaphragms. They always come in a pair and they're actually sold by Metro Molded Parts. Part number is RP32A. RP32A. And it says Dr. Master Electric Shift Vacuum. That stands for Drive Master. That's the later version of the same unit as an electric hand. They changed it to Drive Master for a name, but it's the same exact part, so you can buy them this way. They're not inexpensive, but you know, I said this lasted probably 10 years. And when you buy a pair of these, uh, they're going to cost you over $100. So be prepared for the fact they're going to, and this is the only place in the world I know you can get them. You're not going to make this thing yourself. And as everything does say in the world, everything is known for the state of California to cause cancer. Just, so that's what the sticker is here. All right, here we have a 7 16 nut driver. And I'll just unscrew this. I'm holding the clevis on the other side so it doesn't spin on me when I'm doing it. And we got that undone. Now i got to work everything off. There we go. we got that to pop that way. And we've got our assembly. Now note, there's more to it. Right here, you have a big flat washer. Notice this flat washer is facing this way. It's got a curled up edge. It faces towards the back or, again, away from the clevis. So should you take it out, that's how it faces. After that, you'll see you have another steel washer. This steel washer has got just a teensy curve to it. That also faces away from the clevis. So you put that back. Now you have your old part here, and this is actually a metro molded part. It is a replacement, but it's years old, and you can see that eventually they kind of wear. And as I said, I know somewhere in here there is a crack or tear or a small pinhole that is developed and it's not working because of that. So we're going to get rid of this one and replace it with a new one. So here's our brand new one. You notice the hole is quite tight and everything. Everything looks beautiful. So the next op operation is to get it to press on here, which isn't too hard. You see, I press it on pretty easy. And now we want to rotate this just a bit there we go get this to get the holes to line up holes are all lined up remember this curled edge points away from the clevis so that goes on next then we have got another washer and this particular washer also has a little curve to it put the little curved washer on there and now we're going to start our nut back on here. Yep, didn't get it. There we go. Now I've got a hold of the clevis again. We're going to use our 7 16 inch nut driver to tighten it up. Now, if you can't get it tight enough this way, you're going to go stick it in a vise and you're going to tighten it a little bit more, which is what I'm going to do off camera. You don't need to see that. That's just to be sure that I have this tight enough and it won't come undone. Okay, back with you after I have adjusted it. Tighten it up in the vise a little bit by putting the clevis in the vise and giving this a good few turns so it's nice and tight. Now the process is real simple. You're going to reverse it to put it together. The biggest problem is the spring because you got to hold the spring in there and you got to have a lot of force to hold the spring in when you're starting the first screw. After you get a couple screws in, it becomes fairly easy. As I said, I'm having to push fairly hard at the moment in order to make this work. And I may see if I can start it with the lock washer or if I've got to start a couple without them. But it looks like I've got it. Okay, now all I did was finger tight that for the moment. The reason being is 
all I'm trying to do is get this thing fastened down enough that I can work on it and not have it running around from that spring. There, got a second one started here. This one, for the moment, I am going to skip my lock washer. So I'm just going to try to get this to stay put. So I don't have to have so much force on it with my hand. Obviously, you can do this, as I'm doing it right before you, but I would rate it as not comfortable. There you go. So from that point, I'm going to go through and put them all in, and I'll come back and undo this one and put a lock washer on it. So that's real straightforward. Then you're going to be ready to put it back into the vehicle. Now, possibility is, like right now, I know I have this in the wrong position. I can unloosen, I can loosen my lock nut here, give it a teeny turn, and put it back together, and everything will work just fine. Remember, just a teeny turn. Don't make major turns because you'll change your adjustment too much. So you don't want a major turn, but you can make a teeny turn and do it, and it'll be fine. And then you'll just reverse the process of putting it back in the vehicle. I did not show you that. If you're at this point, you could certainly have taken that apart. And there are other videos on the channel that show you how to do this. Next thing I'll show you is when it's done in the car, I'll show you the car able to shift again when we're finished with everything put together.